Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Tyler Jacks. I'm the director of the Koch Institute. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 11th annual Koch Institute Symposium. Uh, we organize this symposium each year to uh, bring together a group of speakers to discuss important, an important topic emerging in cancer research. Uh, and this year is no exception. Uh, we've chosen the topic of epigenetics, plasticity, and cancer, which I consider to be one of the most interesting uh, and rapidly evolving subjects in cancer research. We've appreciated uh, over many years, but particularly over the last several years, um, the degree to which uh, tumors e exhibit uh, heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneity at the level of mutations in cellular genes, but also heterogeneity in phenotype. Uh, and that heterogeneity is driven in large part um, by a combination of the mutations that exist within cells, but also how those um, alterations are read out uh, in the form of gene expression uh, and, and phenotypic variation. And much of that is driven by epigenetic alterations. Um, a second theme that's emerged over the last several years is the degree to which um, cells exhibit plasticity. That is, that they can change their fate um, as a function of alterations in their epigenetic state. And this, too, is playing important, ro important roles in how we understand the emergent properties in cancer, uh, and perhaps even how we might be able to take advantage of that uh, in terms of treatment. And you'll hear from speakers today about uh, the drivers of this, uh, these changes in, in epigenetics and plasticity. Uh, and also, you'll hear about um, some efforts to use that um, for therapeutic um, control of cancer. This event uh, is the product of a great deal of work. I want to uh, thank Rudy Yanish and Jackie Lees, who were the organizers of this year's symposium. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes work as well. Um, the event is organized by our administrative staff, and uh, Pam DeFreya and Lori Spindler were uh, the main organizers of that effort, uh, and I want to thank them particularly. There's also a, an all volunteer army of our administrators in the Koch Institute who participate in the planning and, and the execution of the day. Um, you'll see them scattered around the hall and outside wearing uh, Ask Me badges. So if you have any questions, do ask questions of them. But I would also ask you to tell them something. Um, tell them that you appreciate their effort, because uh, they do go to a lot of effort to, uh, to bring this together and to make sure that it all goes well. I want to thank our speakers, of course, who've come from near and far to share their science with you. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to have a wonderful day of science and discussion. Um, Finally, I'd like to thank our corporate sponsors, uh, as well as our vendors. Uh, this is a fairly expensive meeting to put together, and we very much appreciate the financial contributions of both of those groups, and I think Jackie will have more to say about that in a second. Um, so I'm going to close my remarks now and, and turn things over to Jackie. As I mentioned, um, this, this symposium was organized by uh, Rudolf Janisch and Jackie Lees. Uh, Rudolf is not with us. He's not dead. Uh, he's in Japan, uh, um, but, but Jackie is, and she's now going to introduce uh, the themes for today. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tyler. So I would like to join Tyler um, in welcoming you all today, both on behalf of me and Rudolf. And Rudolf um, actually had his trip planned uh, before this date was even announced, and he sends his apologies that he couldn't be with us um, today. So as Tyler mentioned, the focus of this meeting is epigenetics. And this is actually um, a really an old field of study. And the term epigenetics was coined by Waddington in 1942 and combines the terms of genetics and epigenesis, which was basically an old term to describe the process of cells um, undergoing differentiation from totipotency. And obviously, at that point, um, he and the field did not know about the nature of genes themselves. But we now know that um, epigenetics comes in large part through modulation of transcriptional um, regulation. Um, and this uh, occurs, although um, there's now very clear data that there's also epigenetic regulation of RNA. Um, and that transcriptional regulation occurs at three different uh, major levels effects on DNA methylation, 
um, effects on the histones, and those are both uh, post-translational modifications of the histones, and also the inclusion of histone variants, which actually influence the transcriptional state. And finally, uh, there's clear involvement of nucleosomes, their normal positioning, and remodeling um, in response to these uh, changes. And most importantly, as Tyler's mentioned, over the last few years, it's become apparent that proteins that regulate each three of these processes are either mutated or deregulated in a wide variety of cancers, really arguing that this can, in fact, be uh, an initiating point um, for tumor genicity. Now, in the normal state, the role of epigenetics is to control cell fate determination. Um, this is the ability of stem cells to maintain their stemness. Um, and also maintain the potential to adopt any one of all the possible differentiation states. And then as cells move through differentiation, um, the process of actually uh, picking and controlling that transcriptional pathway, and again, maintaining that terminal differentiation state. But we also know that we can actually modulate this, and many of the mutations that occur in cancer do this. And this actually gives us an opportunity to change cellular plasticity, so, for example, the process of IPS uh, reprogramming. We know that those uh, events can change uh, and cause developmental syndromes, and most importantly for us, can give rise to cancer. And finally, and I think most importantly, there's now a growing appreciation that maybe we can take advantage of these changes um, in two different ways. One is to use them as biomarkers in a way that you could actually maybe predict um, uh, of the tumorigenic state. Um, in an individual, and also the holy grail of using these as targets for therapeutics. So that now brings me to um, our program, and we really have an unbelievably terrific lineup of speakers, and I would thank them all um, for agreeing uh, to participate today. Um, and before I introduce the first speaker, I would actually like to give a shout out um, to uh, the numerous um, organizations that have actually helped to sponsor this event. So this just shows you a list of all of our sponsors, um, and uh, in particular, I would like to uh, point out the generosity of Agilent, um, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, and Thermo, Thermo Fisher um, Scientific. And importantly, many of these organizations actually have um, uh, participants in the audience today, so I personally would like to convey our gratitude for your contributions, and I hope that folks in the audience, if you run into them, will thank them as well. And finally, I'd also like to give a particular welcome um, to folks from the uh, Jensen um, Pharmaceuticals. Um, they actually sent a large number of people here, including folks from Belgium, both to participate in our symposium, and also yesterday for a scientific exchange between the Koch Institute um, and Janssen Pharmaceuticals, and we really greatly appreciate our interactions. And finally, I would like to uh, remind you that we have a large number of vendors here who've also uh, contributed to support of this effort. Um, they have tables set up outside, so please, please, please go visit them um, and tell you much, how much you appreciate their contribution um, and look at their wares. Okay, so that brings me to um, the first speaker. Um, oh, and I'd just like to say, actually, uh, before we start, um, there was a cell phone found in the ladies' room. So if it's yours, please uh, go collect it at the info desk. We're also not going to take um, questions at today's session um, because of the format, but the speakers will be available at the end of the session, so please come to the front um, and ask any questions that you have. So that brings me to our first speaker, um, Steve Balin, and Steve really needs no introduction. Um, he's really been a central pioneer in the study of epigenetics, and particularly in the role of DNA methylation uh, in gene silencing. Um, he works at the uh, Sydney Kimmel Cancer Research Center at Johns Hopkins, and he has more titles there than I can list. Um, but I'll tell you that three of them are that he's director, deputy director, um, he's chief of the Cancer Biology Division, and he's director um, for research. So if I could welcome Steve up, please, to um, give us the first talk. 